something was not right and I knew it. And then as we went a bit near, I thought, this is not right at all. And then all of a sudden, boom, surrounded. AK-47s all around us. Boom, got us. And they just sat there, just like nodding and looking at me. And then one at a time, we're getting dragged into this room. And there's a guy, two guys, one behind a desk, not saying a word, just staring at me out. And then the other guy in perfect English going, who are you? You are not UN, you are special forces. Welcome back to Inspire Change with Jordan Mulligan. And today's episode is with the amazing Billy Billingham. You might know him from SAS Who Dares Wins. Today's episode was powered and sponsored by Huel, a quick, affordable, nutritionally complete source of food with everything that your body needs. Go to the link in the description where you can find exclusive offers. Thank you to Huel for supporting the podcast. Let's dive into the episode. Let's uh, go with the a, a brief a brief snippet because we will we'll, I'll definitely come back down and shoot this. But the uh, yeah. the Bosnia kidnap story then, like yeah. just from your perspective. So so basically, you know, the early days of Bosnia, which is typical fucking regiment thing. The, you know, the the Bosnia war kicks off. The regiments asked to be involved at the time. It was it was NATO, uh, UN sorry UN basis. So we didn't really have a role over the observers. Go out, find out what's going on in case it es escalates anymore through Europe, all that sort of stuff. So the job we had was unusual for the regiment. It, it was, uh, you know, surveillance gathering to a degree, but supporting more UN and making sure that people are doing, and who's doing what, who's doing violations from being on the ground. What I would say about it was, it was a fucking danger, dangerous job, very dangerous. Because, you know, we weren't, we didn't really have any massive support. We didn't have the rest of the regiment. We were very small numbers, gathering in intelligence, all that sort of stuff. And... One minute, you know, there's three factions all fucking fighting each other. It was a real mess out there. You've got the Cro Croats, Serbs and the Muslims all having goals at each other, cleansing each other's areas, all that sort of stuff. So we were finding all that sort of stuff out. Over the period of time of being there, people started to trust us because we'd go where nobody else from the UN would go. We were literally going through minefields, you know, into combat areas. I know it was crazy. We were getting shot at, we were getting blown up. Mad risk when I look back at it. But that's what we had to do, and that's what we did. It was it's kind of exciting, and that's what we should be doing. And that was the only way you could get ground, ground truth, and we were. And then coming back and obviously giving all that information to the headquarters of the UN within our sectors so they could say, right, this is ground truth, this is where the front line is, this is who's pushing forward, this is what's p potentially going to happen. And that was all from us. So that's kind of the stuff we were doing. And I think some of the... We kind of got used to the troops on the ground they, and they got used to seeing us, you know, because we were quite fucking ballsy, to be honest. And it was towards the end of the, the conflict in um, Bosnia where the role was going to change, you know, the, the, it was going to switch from UN to I-4, which was more of an aggressive role. And basically, you know, the international force saying, you're done with this now, we're fucking stopping it. You know, you, we've got, it's got to be sorted out. At, at, just before around that time, a good friend of mine, Mick, comes out from the squadron to join me. I've already been out there four or five months, I think, or whatever. So I, I've, you know, I know the area pretty well. So Mick comes out to join us, and we had the ID cards, which are kind of fake, fake ID cards at the time. I don't know whether we were given them or we made them. I don't really know. But on the ID card, my number and Mick's number only were like one digit out. You know, so it was like, oh, you must have come in at the same time. I was zero, zero, 001, you were zero, zero, 002, if you know what I'm saying. It didn't, there's no relevance to that till a bit later on. So we're out there and it's getting towards the, the end of the war and we found a location, kind of historic location, where we can bring in all the factions together, all the generals from each force together to um, shake hands, call it a day, hand over whatever, and... and end the war that that was a plan we'd had three or four of these meetings and they weren't going too well you know because there's still a war going on and basically what i used to do my, one of my jobs with the team that we had um at the location where this meeting was going it was in the middle of a battlefield so you gotta have a picture of this there's a there's literally you know a front line over there front line over there front, they're all fighting each other somewhere in the middle of that which was pretty dangerous which actually was in a minefield by the way we brought in the troops and we'd, we'd put, create a square with these tank type vehicles. And then I and one of and whoever else would go down, dangerous as shit, through the minefield to the front line that, with the trenches or the bunkers where the Serbs were. 
and you know, come in, we've come in peace, meet their general and bring them in. And we do all, all we've done this a number of times and they kind of got used to it and we got, a, if I'm honest, a bit blase about it, you know, cause I knew the ground, I knew the area, all that sort of stuff. And now this new guy, Mix, come in. I'm orientating him. We're getting on. He's not a new guy in terms of, he's been in the regiment longer than me, he's new to this theatre. So I'm kind of chaperoning him, showing him what I know, da 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 da. Got a bit blase. And then on one particular day, it's that moment in life when you know something ain't right, the air's on the back of the next sketch. So we're walking down through the minefield. I've already bought in, we bought in the, the Croatian guy, we bought in the Muslim general. We've got to meet the Serb. And they were always the more aggressive and professional, you know, the real hard line people. So as we're going down there, I remember walking down the track around the mines and I look, I'm looking at the, where the bunkers are at the front position and straight away something, that third party awareness, something was not right. And I knew it, I knew it, but I, I, I'd let the snowball roll. Cause I thought, well, I've got Mickey, I'm trying to not show off, but I'm, I'm showing in the ropes but I knew something weren't right. It just didn't feel right. There was not the normal amount of people on, on the, in fact, there was hardly anybody in the front part of the trenches, which is very unusual for a front line, of course. And as I got a bit closer, I thought, we'll go a bit nearer. And then as we went a bit nearer, I thought, this is not right at all. And then all of a sudden, boom, out of nowhere, boom, surrounded, AK-47s all around us. Boom, got us, grabbed us, run us over the line. So we now had never been the, that, that side of the Serbian border before over the Serbian border um, and into what looked like an old um, cottage, a uh, bungalow. And then we're, we're kind of outside the bungalow and they're, they're screaming and shouting at us, you know, quite, kind of aggressive. Took the weapons off us. We only had pistols because we had to come with peace. We're not here to fight, that sort of thing. Took the weapons off us, took bits and pieces off us, quick, almost strip search, get our kit back, and then took us into this building. And it was one of the weirdest moments ever, because we went into this building, as I remember it, and there's a big wooden table, there's like benches around the side, and they throw us onto this bench at the back end, just slam us down, you know, and then you got, went to, like, if I looked at them, they're like, wouldn't speak, they kept swinging their fingers and pointing. And I remember looking at them, and it was kind of a dim lit room, and they all had massive beards, they looked like, big, proper, fucking hard people, like, you know. And there's about eight or nine of them in there, all got AKs, of course, and they just sat there, just like nodding and looking at me. Anyway, so there's me and there's Mick, and my head now is spinning through a, a world of emotions. I've gone from, shit, I fucked up, to, you know, feeling stupid, because I've led us into this and I shouldn't have done, to feeling guilty, because, I weren't so bothered about me. I was more concerned I've, I've got Mick in this mess. And then I went through, uh, not cockiness, but a calmness of, hang on a minute, we're okay. And I could speak the language. I'd learned the language. So I tried, you know, I was like, yes, some Billy Kakos there. And they, they obviously knew I'd, and they just went, like this big monster of a man. And I was just, oh. And I could feel me going, oh, fuck. <laughs> we're in the shit. And now the emotions have gone from what I've just all spoke about to, oh fuck, we're in this shit. I don't really know where this is going. Then in my head, I'm thinking, I've got a map in my pocket. And you never mark a map, you know, but because this is a UN thing, I had marked it. And it, there's nothing really, but, but in my head I'm thinking, I've marked a map. They're gonna fucking, you know, think I'm a spy or whatever. I'm gonna get, whatever. So I'm really concerned, but for whatever reason, when the searches, they didn't take this map. I hope you're enjoying this episode so far. Today's video was sponsored by Huel, a quick, affordable, nutritionally complete source of food with everything that your body needs. I also have just started recently using Huel's Daily Greens. Please go check the link in the description for the best greens on the market, in my opinion. They taste amazing and they have everything that your body needs. Find exclusive offers down below with the link. Thank you to Huel for sponsoring the podcast. Anyway, next thing, after a period of time, I can't remember how long we're in there, we get ragged out, that you fucking dragged out, thrown in the back of this old per, uh, four by four Pajero, Pajero thing, 
thrown into the back seat, slammed against each other. We're kind of trying to make contact and the like. They've got a driver and what looked like a military police type person. He was in all black kit and he's got an AK and he's in the front seat, kneeling in the front seat with the AK in the back point at us. And I'm sat there and the next thing is, I went to say something and he's pushed the barrel into my mouth. So I'm sat with the barrel in my mouth like this, Mick sat next to me and we're driving out and going somewhere. I don't know where we're going, kind of at speed as well, over these bumpy tracks. And I'm thinking, that AK's in my mouth, his finger's on the trigger, but then after about a minute or two, he takes the safety catch off and cocks it. And again, weird emotions and surreal moment. I went, I was like, what a wanker. He's on the front line, he hasn't even made his weapon ready, because that's the first thing when you're on, you've got to be ready. And, he was, and, I was, and then I thought, hang on a minute, that's in my mouth. And I'm like, shit. And we're bouncing, he's got his finger on the trigger, and I think any minute now, this is it. And off we, off we go, you know, and we're going up the, up the road, but as I've got this AK in my mouth, I'm still doing my surveillance. I'm like looking and I can see there's tanks parked at next to that. And I'm trying to, in my, in my head, ma work out on the map where we're going. And we've never been this side of the board, but I've got an idea where we're going. We're heading towards a town called Priador. I knew that and I was like, okay, yeah, okay, I've got that, there's tanks over there. I'm thinking about the plan I'm gonna brief when I get back instead of really what's going on. And it's kind of, swaying every now and again back to, this fucking weapon's in my mouth. Then I went through a phase of, if he breaks my teeth, I'm gonna fucking kill him. <laughs> it was just surreal moments. Anyway, long story short, we end up getting taken to a place and at the side of the road, through coming through one village, he slowed right down and there was a bunch of people, mainly women at the side of the road, all like waving and screaming. It was as if they knew we were coming. You know, and they're like cheering that, we're in that van. That's how it felt to me. Whether that was how it really was, I can't really remember that, but that's what I remember. Because I've still got this AK in my fucking mouth. And we, we, we go after, we're off traveling for about 45 minutes maybe. And we're coming over these railway tracks. So again, in my head, I'm thinking, okay, that's a, a, a distinctive location. It's railway tracks, da, 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 whatever. So it, when I do get a chance to get out of here and have a look at the map, I'll know where we are. I didn't really see any signs for where we were. And we came over the railway track, so we went left. And as we're going down past this compound, there's an old factory similar to like this in this field. The field was ploughed and muddy and dirty. And it was like a, a mesh fence all the way around it, all ratty, rusty fence. But in the field was two or three people on their knees, bald head, like in scraggy old clothes, kneeling. And I was thinking, the f they're kneeling in the mud for? The penny didn't drop. They were actually prisoners, prisoners of this war. Just didn't drop at all. Anyway, they took us into this compound where this, this building was. And the next one, we're in a, a couple of porter cabins, like police porter cabins. And it was all kind of civil then. They never really beat us anything, but they're quite aggressive with us. And then we sat in almost, you could like the entrance area, the reception area, if you like, on this bench, not allowed to talk. And then one at a time, we're getting dragged into this room. And there's a guy, two guys, one behind a desk, very stern looking, very aggressive. One guy behind the desk just staring, not saying a word, just staring me out. And then the other guy in perfect English going, who are you? You are not UN, you are special forces. I was like, you know, what, where's all this going? And, and interrogating basically. And then I'm trying to speak serbo Croat, so, Next thing, they, 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 they're fucking going at me. And then they picked up on, and I'm thinking, you know, where do I go with this? And I'm, I'm going, no, we, we UN, you know, I'm playing the game and trying to fit, play the field type, feel worried, all that sort of, sort of stuff. And I wasn't really worried. I was just fucking still in this surreal state of mind. And then he picked, he's got this, he's got the two ID cards. He goes, how do you know that guy there? And I goes, well, he's, he's been working with us, but he's only been here a short while. And he goes, you're lying. I was, no, th that was the truth. And he goes, your ID card, number 001-002. And it was, he'd make it come in, and I was like, you know. But then in my mind, I thought, fucking brilliant. They're picking up on an ordered bullshit trivia. I can play this. This will keep us going. But in at the same time thinking, what the fuck are they going to do with us? What's happening here? So this goes on for a period of time, blah, blah, blah. Mick gets, gets dragged in. And he's only in there about a few minute. He's back out on him. I'm in again. <laughs> and, and we talked, we did talk about this after he goes, yeah, because you played the dumb fuck in the fort. We'll beast the dumb fuck. 
<laughs> that was me. So I was in and out getting interrogated, all this sort of stuff. And we, we didn't give anything away at all as to what we were doing and why and all that. And then the next thing, oh, after, I don't know how long it was, I'm going to say six, seven hours, maybe. It might have been less, it might have been more. We get fucking dragged out again, thrown in the back of the vehicle and then driven at speed all the way back to that, uh, the checkpoint where we've been taken. Given our kit, thrown out to walk back, just done. And we're like, what the fuck was that all about? And then we end up back at the thing, back at the, and then they're like, you know, wow, welcome back. You know, the blokes, they were putting a plan together to come and rescue us, try and find it. But they didn't know where we were. And basically, we were trying to work out why they, they were doing this. And I think what it was, it wasn't long after um, the UN or under the UN, they, they, they bombed the Serb position in uh, Srebrenica, the Srebrenica incident where, you know, they went in, cleansed, they f took the people out. The f anyway, so the, then UN, they got permission to bomb the Serbs for their aggressive action. But what had happened, somehow that incident about now the UN's bombing Serbian positions, uh, uh, not in playing ball, you know, they're the, the pushing the boundaries. It was reported on the BBC, on the news. And when it was reported about the UN, they said, the voice you're gonna hear now is a British SAS soldier calling in the jet. So then obviously the factions out there, the general, these are the, the SAS are out here, they're in, the ones who are calling the jets. We still never to this day, my guess, and I think it'd be nice to know what Mix is about is, I think what they were gonna do was take us and use us as human shields and basically strap us to the gates of a, a compound where they've got whatever ammunitions or whatever it is. So if you bomb it, you're going to kill your own people. And that's what I think they were going to do with us. We never really got to the bottom of why they did it, but we did get released. And I know why we got released, basically because once the rest of our team that were in the, with the delegation fucking realised we'd gone, they went, okay, it, they got permission then to hold the, the generals. Because by when I'd gone, somehow the, the Serb general made his own way in, went into the meeting, denied anything about us. They denied we'd even we'd been down to that checkpoint. It was a bizarre situation. And it was never really, you know, it, it, it was just like, okay, that's happened, let's fucking get on with it. I spent all night on the fucking roof, watching everyone waiting. And I'm thinking, fuck me, I'm in a situation I don't want to be in here. And this guy, he's only a small guy, by the way, but he's got two big henchmen with him, and they're big dudes. I'm absolutely shitting myself, to be honest. So I'm there on the roof all night. I've got fucking bricks, I've got fucking machete, I've got all sorts of shit. I thought he's coming, he's getting, I'm gonna kill this guy. <laughs>